Hi everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Please press the thumbs up button, subscribe, share, comment. All these things help us all out with the YouTube and Google algorithm. So I just got the phone with David Chandler. David Chandler is the president of Cal Saget. And I wanna talk about our conversation in summary. Some of you might be thinking, is this guy transparent or not? Is he full of it? I am going to be honest with you, and I believe that David was being fully transparent with me over our phone call. He admitted that the top security companies, the largest security companies in, in California, even in the United States, are in Cal Saga. And they have a huge role at Cal Saga. He did mention that right now, as we speak, your security officer who is not a private patrol operator. Private patrol operator, by the way, is a license in California that is given to security company owners. So a security company owner, owner or I'm sorry, security company is the same as a private patrol operator. So in order to be a member of CalSaga, you have to be a private patrol operator. You have to be a proprietary security employer or a training facility. And the fee for a train facility is $450. For a private patrol operator, it's like $250 or $200. And then it's like $10 for every employee that you have. If you are a line level security officer, you cannot join CalSaga. And actually, security officers who don't own the security company or who are not officers, corporate officers within the security officer, they used to be allowed, according to the bylaws, they're allowed to be members of CalSaga, but for some reason they were, they were all removed. Um, David does have a good point that there's not a lot of participation in the security industry. He says he goes to Sacramento, it's him and his lobbyist. And reading the minutes, that's that's the truth. Most people don't participate in that. So I do want to commend his David's time that he that he spends in Sacramento, but I think him spending time in Sacramento for Assembly Bill 1244, it's under the wrong reasons. Um, I asked him if he would oppose Assembly Bill 1244 because Cal Saga supports it. And he told me no, unless there's some convincing evidence otherwise. So I'm gonna say that once again, Cal Saga will continue to support Assembly Bill 1244 unless there's some convincing evidence otherwise. He told me that on Thursday, he would contact Mr. Holden's office, Christopher Holden. He's the author of Assembly Bill 1244. And he will try to get some language in there that will allow the chief of BSIS discretion on who is able to become a qualified manager. So if Assembly Bill 1244 passes, and I don't want to be repetitive, but I must, you have to have one year, I'm sorry, two years of private security experience, and then one year experience as a manager or administrator. David wants to see if we can get some maybe some language changed around where the chief of bsis has discretion i believe that this is a horrible idea and here's why if you give a government official discretion they're going to use their discretion based on politics based on the way they feel of the situation based on their training based on their experience and i argued with 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 david and i and, and i said it doesn't have to get to that level David also mentioned that many times you can just appeal to the BSIS chief. So if you're not qualified to have your own security company, you can just appeal to the chief. You could just give them a phone call or have somebody advocate on your behalf or even a supervisor. But why do we have to get to that level? If it's written in the bill and if it's clear, then we don't have to go through these extra steps. Okay. And right now, the way it is, it's clear, guys. You only need one year of security experience. That's it, but it's it's clear. So hopefully on Thursday, there's some changes. Um, I'm still not too happy that he's still going to support Assembly Bill 1244. This bill is anti-military and it's anti-law enforcement. David mentioned that he's former military reserves and that he's former, he's a former police officer. I don't know where, I don't know what branch. And he says that most, something to the fact that most 
you know, most of our enlisted in the military don't know the laws about, about running the business. Okay, filling out the proper HR forms. And I have to agree with them on that. But I'll tell you this, that supervisors in the military, or I'm sorry, enlisted between E1 and E9, and I'm not sure what the grades are right now, but some of these levels, there's, there's supervisory skills, levels that need to be obtained. And then in law enforcement, his argument was like that a lot of cops, well, a significant amount of cops don't know how to run a business. Well, some of these cops, okay, have been chiefs, sergeants, lieutenants, and they need a little bit more training. Cal Saga offers a two-day security university course that helps them manage their business. This is the problem I have right now, guys. There's no evidence, there's no solid evidence or any evidence that there's significant consumer harm or significant problems with existing law that allows security officers with one year experience to run a business. There's already a mechanism in place if they violate the law, a qualified manager. Now, there's no qualified manager license right now. That's what we're trying to avoid. But you can get your guard card taken away, your baton permit taken away, your firearm permit taken away, all those licenses taken away. Okay, so BSIS has that authority to do that. If you are a plaintiff in lawsuit, you can bring this case to litigation if you want. Insurance, David mentioned that that some of these companies, I think you mentioned that they're running without insurance or they're not having the proper policy. Guys, if you're running without insurance, then your license is going to be suspended. And the brew has the ability to suspend your license or even revoke your license after a proper hearing. So there's already mechanisms in place. I do agree that we need to have qualified, um, qualified people running these, these businesses, but there's other mechanisms, guys. There's training that you can attend and there's already penalties in place, okay? Um, I mentioned to David that there's a lot of security companies out there. A lot of them are mom and pop sh shops. If you go to one security company that's been in business for 40 years and dad runs a business and dad has sons or daughters, well, the sons and daughters are going to be the managers and administrators, not you. That's going to create security officers hopping in different companies and never potentially getting that opportunity. If you work for a big company like Securitas or Allied, your chances of moving up can be eight years, 10 years, 20 years, or 40 years. Okay? That's, that's not fair. So David, in response, mentioned that we made a good point. And on Thursday, he's going to, to talk to um, Holden's office and see maybe we could get some some of the language changed around. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that offer on our behalf. I want the bill changed. The text on the bill changed. I want it actually better. We're better off just opposing it. And he actually agrees with private investigators that this bill is not fair. So if you're a private investigator, if this bill passes, you're going to have to pay for a qualified manager certificate and you're going to have to pay for for the the actual private investigation agency. It's a double it's a double license. Um, so he su he supports private investigators in that regard. He believes that's unfair. But if Ke when Cal Saga still supports this bill, okay, you're running contradictory to private investigators and our group of at least two hundred and fifty five. I asked Cal, I'm sorry, I asked David if we can have members of our group, or at least 256 group members, join Cal Saga. And he said he would bring that up to the board, but ultimately that decision. I told him probably not because they're going to lose power. He disagreed. Guys, the Cal Saga board, six out of the nine represent the largest security companies, if not in the world. Ally Universal, Securitas, and David actually didn't deny that. So he's going to see if we're able to have security officers as members, as hopefully as voting members. If that's the case, maybe we could pay a $25 fee and we can help Cal Saga with lobbying efforts. 
unfortunately, right now, guys, a lot of the money that's coming in for lobbying efforts is from the big companies. Okay? So I do appreciate David for being transparent. I really enjoyed the, our conversation with him. But I am disappointed, though, that he's still not going to oppose Assembly Bill 1244. So our fight continues on. I need you guys to keep passing our petition around. I'll leave a link in the description box and then in the comment section. Guys, when you go to work, I want you to hand the petition, I'm sorry, forward the petition on someone else's cell phone and say, hey, can you just sign this? Our next plan of action is as follows. We are going to be contacting Christopher Holden's office. We are going to send emails. We are going to make phone calls. And we are going to contact him through the assembly bill system. So if you register as an as a registry or I don't know what what it's called guys, a concerned citizen, you can get a regist you can, you can register your opposition and it would be a formal record. So we're going to use that three three step approach. Um Yeah, that's that's what we're going to do right now, guys. I, I know right now that many of you are probably in the works of contacting Cal Saga. Um, let's, let's hold off on that. Let's let this simmer for a little bit. Okay, let's see what happens on, on Thursday, but let it simmer. I know that many of you are pissed off. I'm going to get tons of phone calls, emails. So most of you will not ever get a chance to open up your own security company ever. Okay. Let's direct our effort to Christopher Holden's office. That's that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, I'll send you, well, in the description box, I'll give you instructions, some, some suggestions on how to do this, but we need to fight this. Guys, I need you, and I'm talking to you watching this video as you're driving, as you're on your post, as if you're, maybe you're sitting on your couch or in bed, you're watching this video regardless. You can't just continue to sit there. You're going to have to do something. I need you. We all need you to act to do something. If you're from another state, please do the same. Now, when you contact Mr. Holden's office, the secretary or the receptionist might direct you to your own assembly person. And I encourage you to reach out to that person as well. But we still want the message directly to Mr. Christopher Holden's office. Okay, guys, the fight begins now.